Today, we're talking about something every single accountant has faced, and it affects sole proprietors, traditional accounting firms, and even modern cloud accounting firms. And yep, you know what it is, burnouts. That is that mental, emotional, even sometimes physical toll that the workload in our accounting profession, you know, puts on some of the individuals who work in it. You know, I've got personal experiences with this. I've seen it in our firm at Acuity. I've, and luckily I've got one of our absolute favorite guests with me today who's made a bit of a mission to kind of talk about this and bring some things to light. All that here today on Drink While You Think, a happy hour conversation between a couple of guys building their firm in really weird ways. I'm your host, Kenji, and our amazing sponsor today is Tri Merits the specialty tax services firm that helps other CPA firms and small to mid-sized businesses with tax planning strategies such as cost segregation, R&D, the ERC, Section 179, and 45 L credits. I mean, I don't even know what those are. So you know <laughs> the folks at TriMerit are crazy smart. They're even kind of the front runners right now in the Section 174 that's going on, which people really, especially if you're working with tech companies, you need to know about. But hey, Tax planning strategies. Get yours today at TriMerit. And who do we have here? One of the co founder himself of TriMerit, the king of craft beer, the unique CPA, and just an all around awesome guy, just a huge friend and favorite of the podcast, Mr. Randy Crabtree. Randy, tell everyone who you are and what are you drinking today, my friend? Well, I don't know. On that introduction, I was looking around to see who was on the show with you today. I'm like, wait, that's not me. What's going on here? <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, uh, repeat visitor to Drink While You Think, which I, I feel it. very honored about. Um, who am I? You already said it. I'm you know, I'm partner at Tremerit. We do especially tax work. More importantly, I'm a host of the Unique CPA podcast, which is become its own living, breathing thing, it feels like, which is kind of an education type platform, content hub. We're working on to find it what it exactly is. But my mission uh, is to basically make the accounting world better. And if we can do that through the unique CPA, that's what I want to do. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it, my friend. Um, I also love too that, again, you are our most generous of sponsors and gift givers and that man the beer you send is just next level so you gotta show were you not drinking the same today you, you sent us some in advance walk us through what we're drinking yeah well so i sent uh three beers i think we might open two we'll see if we have enough time today i have but two of them open <laughs> i do have open? two open all right i will open two i'll tell you the first one that we're drinking that i'm gonna open which is the unique cpa beer so a little bit of and sponsored by Trimerit on the side. Cool. Um, it is a beer. So so you mentioned that I'm a craft beer guy. I'm partner in a craft beer bar in Chicago that is gets a ton of recognition as being a, a, a place that knows how to treat beer. I, it's not me. That's the people that work there that are the experts. I just get to hang around with them. But that's called the Beer Temple. But that's allowed me to create a bunch of relationships in the beer industry. And when we were putting together our conference for this last year, we do a conference every year. And when we put our conference together for this last year, we do like a happy hour beer tasting. And we thought, you know what? We should have our own beer. Let's create our own beer for this uh, this conference. And Mark Reese, who's our head of marketing, is just an unbelievably good artist. So he created this label. And we went with one of my favorite styles, which is a West Coast IPA. And so we we canned this. We had it uh, private labeled from a, comp a beer brewery that I know in the Chicago area. And we just been sending it a bunch of people that were on the conference, a bunch of people that weren't on the conference, just trying to get this out. And obviously, it's also a marketing, branding thing. So it, it comes in that play. But so, yeah, Brilliant. that's where this beer came from. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mmm, man, I cannot wait. I've had one of these, or you gave me an early preview of these, but now getting it again. Did I really? I didn't mm -hmm. remember that. I think, ooh. Oh, I gave you one in Austin or something, In Austin, right? Texas, yep. All right, I forgot about that. All I right, did. Well, cool. I took it, I threw it in my backpack and took it up to my hotel room and chilled it there and like, ooh. Did you really? Dude, that's All a right. good West Coast IPA right there. 
It is actually. I'm looking at I don't know if we're going to be talking about beer, but for now I am. Mm -hmm. It's actually, and I haven't looked at it all that closely. It's really clear. It's clean beer. It's Very maybe clean. slightly haze to it, but that might even just be my glass haze. Yeah. It is a nice clean beer. We, one of my partners said this might be his favorite West Coast style IP, which he's exaggerating because <laughs> Pliny the Elder, you can't beat. I mean, you cannot be Pliny. That's, I mean, no. it's. Yes, that would be yeah. tough to be Pliny for sure. Yep. But, but this, I mean, this is, is hey, look at look out Pliny. Look out yeah. for the unique CPA. <laughs> well, it comes. we are going to do a second version, uh, probably this maybe post tax season that we'll be sending out to people, which will be haven't figured out the style yet, but it's going to be another version of unique CPA beer. And probably nice. uh maybe we'll come up with the you know, a Pilsner style or something. We'll we'll see. But, okay. but we're gonna okay. do another one. Oh. I think it's fantastic. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. It is a good beer. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I was going to say, though, one of my partners says, yeah, his favorite. He says everything's his favorite. So <laughs> sometimes you got to take that with the grain. He likes beer. He likes everything. He, he has such a positive attitude, which if we're, guess if we're going to talk about burnout, which is important. Yeah, I his mean, attitude is so great that it's just fun to be around. I, the, I love people like that. I see... You know, I was just spent time with them recently to my dad. I was out visiting. They used to be in Chicago. Now they're out in Colorado. And my dad's that way. My wife says this all the time. She's like, I always love cooking for your dad because everything I make is like, oh, this is amazing. It's the best thing I've had. But he genuinely feels that way. Yeah. You're kind of like, oh, yeah. how's that possible? But these people like that, I mean, yep, good folks. Well, okay. So, all right, we'll get into it here. And I'll just share a little bit of my experience. So, all right, we're only into February. We're just kind of getting into February. We're just barely into what I guess our profession, many people refer to as busy season, mm -hmm. which a lot of us have been trying to shake that moniker for a while. And oh, I agree. I guess here's what I've experienced at Acuity, our firm, right? Um, we started doing monthly employee survey surveys just almost a year ago, right? And we've been doing that with our great partner, Gusto, who we use their payroll products. They've got a nice embedded built-in <laughs> surveying mechanism, which has been incredibly beneficial. So I do not mind plugging them for that because we love yep. this tool. Yep. But um, January, just this last month, was our lowest rating on employee satisfaction that we've had. It just really? You just watched it like we could actually go back and track it. I can see around our conference, um, the Acuity Con, like it spikes and comes up and everyone's yeah. together and happy. And then then it comes down a little bit and kind of holidays, it kind of picks back up. And then just January kind of came crashing down and we measured at the end of January and it just was, you kind of open your eyes and you go, Oh my gosh. Right. You can kind of see it. And it is the start of the season. And then I had a bunch of, you know, connected with a bunch of team members on just kind of a bunch of tough stuff. I mean, just specific things were illnesses or family challenges, personal issues. We even had some who dealt with natural disasters. There was a bunch of stuff over some on some of our team who's a like global team. Mm -hmm. I mean, just going through some tough stuff and got the chance to spend a lot of time with firm owners already, other firm owners that you and I are friends with this year, hearing similar things from them as well. And so it it feels like that dreaded burnout and the year's only just begun. It feels like a bit of a broken record sometimes in our space, but I also just had a big milestone birthday. I just you did. So, so it's possible. <laughs> I'm just being a grumpy old man now. Maybe that's what I am. <laughs> and you're bringing everybody down with you. Is yeah, that I it? it? Yeah. Things were just <laughs> off all these days. Back in my day. Back in, so then maybe it's you're just Genji, the grumpy old man, or I don't know. Maybe we're seeing this elsewhere. I don't, what do you think? Are we, are you, it feels like it's that time of year, but what are you seeing? Are you seeing for other people having a tough time at the start of the year? So, so I'll say that in general. Yes. Let me, and let me back up with a couple questions to you. Yeah. Did you do a survey last January? When did your survey start? It just started like in February. So we're like 11 months since right. we don't have data on Jane. That I was looking for that. I'm like, Oh, we started it. Their new yeah, HR manager, I, 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 I would be interested in that. I mean, obviously, you don't want to wait another year to put new 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 policies in place to make sure that this doesn't happen. But I'm guessing post-holiday pre-tax season is just a 
that's probably the mindset so gets the worst. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a lot of that. I know, I know holidays are stressful for people in general. Yeah. Um, and then getting out of that thinking, okay, we've got through this and now, oh crap, I've got three more months of, of, uh, tied to my desk because of tax season, which I Absolutely. think you guys probably do a better job than a lot of people, but I'm thinking that's it. So another year of, of data is probably going to be beneficial I for you. I think so. I hope yep. so. Yep. Then from a standpoint of my seeing this, yes. But the positive thing I'm seeing is more and more and more firms are trying to change that, which is huge. This is a, this has to, this has to, things have to change. We have this perception slash reality. And it's, I think it's, I say perception slash reality because the perception has definitely been high stress, high burnout, burn and churn, you know, especially big four, which I know you came out of, you know, you're going to put in these extremely tough hours. And then, you know, in two years, you're going to go work in the industry because you get so tired of it, but you'll learn a lot. I don't think that's the way you have to learn. So yeah. what I'm seeing is that there's been a lot of change from the standpoint that firms are starting to address that. I think part of it is because they have to, I think they want to, I'm not saying they don't want to, but they have to, because we're not getting the people. And if we're not getting people going into accounting and we're not getting people staying in accounting, this is a crisis in my mind. Right. Um, it is. It is a crisis. And, and so it has to be addressed. The The reason I think I see firms, more firms are doing it, and maybe it's just because me personally, I'm seeing it. But I started doing this presentation on mental health awareness. We call it many things, you know, burnout. It's not a badge of honor, mental health awareness beyond burnout. Uh, um, and it's not a doom and gloom thing. It's setting the stage that we have issues, but it's also setting the groundwork for things we can do to be a better firm, to work less, to be more efficient, to be more productive, to, to have more, a better corporate culture, all those things. And so what I've seen in the last six, well, maybe it's been nine months since I've been doing this presentation, it's just, there's so many firms that just want me to come in and talk about this. They're like, hey, this is something we're trying to in install a new policy, a new culture, and I think your presentation would be great. And mm -hmm. I typically, the last three years, have decided I'm not going to travel in January yeah. because, one, I just, I am nonstop May through December. You are. But yeah. I made some exceptions this year because people want me to come out and do the, the mental health. And I'm like... I'm doing the mental health. If they want well, me to come so out. That one, yeah. You'll make an exception. Sounds like right. that one be easier. So I think firms are trying to change. I think there's a good push there and we still got ways to go. Yeah. And I want to get to, I think some of the things that maybe you've seen or others are seeing that firms are kind of where they're taking action and certainly just getting you to come in and speak about it or, or having it as a topic is, is a, a form of taking action, but maybe to back up further. Yep. As, as guys who've been in the accounting profession a, a little while, you and I. I've been longer than you. I know. I know. A bit I, longer, I hit huh? 60 this last year. You just hit the uh, a number less than that. A number less, um, the and, big 5-0. Yeah. Um, and so I got 10 years on you in this you profession. You got me by a little bit. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't recall or recollect back in my younger years of being in public accounting that topics like this were ever addressed. Like it was, it was a badge of honor. It was expected. It was a work hard, play hard mentality. You know, it was, um, you kind of heard you know, the, the pat on the backs, the, when you heard about people's billable hours or so-and-so over there, Oh yeah, it right. That was not, isn't that some of the culture you think we've had? It's we've self-created this problem somewhat mm. from a yeah. standpoint that we, 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 uh, one, we bill based on hours. So how do you make more? You work more. And so how am I going to make more money? Okay. I'm putting 60 hours in now. I got to put 80 hours in if I'm going to make more money or if the firm's going to make more money because it's based on hours. That's something that has to change. Yeah. It's also was taboo. You can't show that you're stressed out or burnt out because you know you're not going to get the promotion because look at Randy, he can't handle these hours. We're all working 100 hours and he's going he's not in here on Sundays. Yeah. And so Randy's not getting the promotion. I mean all that stuff has been in the past. I think that's changing, but that's why we've created some I, I of think this we problem. have. I, I yep. mean I remember I still remember those very distinctly and very formatively and I think sometimes those kind of haunt me. I still have to break away from that mentality. I know 
my co-host Matthew, who's usually here, he's got great stories about it because he you know, he came over later to this, and he, it took him even a few years here at Acuity. I, I was like, I had kind of burned the bridge and was like, we're gonna do it differently. And even the first few years at Acuity, he talks about like, man, it was hard for me to change out of that mentality of all oh, the yeah. hours and utilization. But I, I remember, um, so I, when I was Arthur Anderson. Uh, and I guess all the big firms back then had their own way of training. Uh, you would do, when you started at Arthur Anderson, you would do a week, your very first week you would spend in the office. And then you'd spend your next two weeks up by you, up, up Saint in Charles. St. Charles, Saint oh, Charles yeah. Illinois, right? You'd go yep. up there with everyone else and do this global training. It was great. It was wild. It was actually really kind of fun looking back. I bet it was. But, but the first week in the office, I remember we're kind of doing local office training, they called it. And a partner came in and he's kind of walking us through just the the day. And I will never forget. He showed, walked through all different clients he worked on and all different S ones or companies he'd taken public, right? Super impressive. Arthur Anderson had this massive Atlanta office. We were, we were like the size of the, of the other big six, the other five of them combined. We were just a massive office. So we had, we had all the, you know, what were the, um, do you remember the, uh, the, the clear kind of like uh like tombstone things like if someone were to go public you'd you'd stack up all these interesting like oh i think uh, i know what you mean yeah the the acrylic like glass yes i mean this plaques whatever yeah this guy had them everywhere and he was kind of bragging about everybody took public there were some really impressive companies he took public and he's like yeah this one and he talked about like yeah i guess i missed the birth of all three of my kids he's like but you know here's why i took public and i remember kind of like I'm like 22 years old, right? Right out of college. And I'm looking around the room like, did did, <laughs> did he just say that? Like, right. like and, and did he say it in terms of like pride of like, this is what you do. And I think everyone's there kind of nodding. You kind of get that feeling of like, something doesn't feel right here. This feels off. Like in your company, you're also kind of nodding your head like, oh, I guess that's what we're supposed to do. And I mean, I think yeah. those little moments are there where you're just oh, like, yeah. you look back and go, what what yeah. are we doing so yeah i think there's some things around the profession that um you know when you when you only have two levers to pull to your point earlier about yeah you bill by the hour you've got rates and you've got hour and when you yeah. only have those two things there's not much you can do besides work more hours and your rates only have so much elasticity so you're like yep. what are you going to do you're going to force people to kind of go and say hey we need to get higher utilization out of yep. our people which just means more hours it's tough right and then, and then sometimes, and speaking of that, then sometimes you just have managers or or somebody just kind of teaching you bad behavior. It's like you got to come in early, you got to leave late, you got to be here on weekends. And then half the time, you probably look at their utilization, or, or they're they're probably not billing the numbers. They're just sitting there thinking, as long as I'm here. And then that tr- goes down to the next level, and they think, oh, I got to be there all the time. If I'm not yeah. there all the time, yeah. how am I going to get to his level or her level or that level? So yeah, there's things like that. There's that some can, things there. I mean, it, I think just, that's what's difficult about it is there was a, it always was kind of a bit of a work hard and play hard sometimes mentality in our profession. I think people are drawn to it kind of, because I think the the problems are unique and interesting and they do take some mental effort. And it is a, oh, yeah. I think most people you meet are accountants, they like to work vigorously and they work the hard yeah. and be intentional, but boy, it really kind of got a little out of, out of control and out of hand. And it's, it's cool to hear that you're seeing firms who, and I'm almost not sure I care what, why they're yep. doing it. In some cases, it may just be purely, I got to get more competitive and get more people because it's harder to get these folks yep. or whether there's more of a conscious in the profession saying, Hey, we got to, we've seen some tough things that we'd like to not be that type of firm. I'm not sure which it is or what you're yep. seeing, but. I'm I'm seeing a little of both. And I think, I think they try to come at it from the, Hey, we want to be better for everybody, for our, our people, for our clients, mm-hmm. for us. Um, but it's also we have an, an employee issue. We can't get people. How do we, you know, make changes? So I'm I'm seeing both. Whatever way it is, as long as a change is going to happen, uh, a change is going to happen. The interesting thing is when I do like here, I did one last week. I won't, you know, I won't name a firm's name or anything. And but I'll just tell you an anecdote, a, a story. Anecdote? That's the wrong word. Anecdote. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to you tell did, you a you story. You just did the Midwestern, the Chicago <laughs> pronouncement of it. That's all. I'm going to tell you a story. So, so I flew out to a firm this last week. I'm 
I'm sitting in an Airbnb in California right now. That's what I said. I just, I, I, this is one of the things I've done. I get out of town January, February, March, just so I can refresh. I think that's important. Now, everybody listening to this can't do this because you probably, you know, some of you are sitting in tax season. So right. I understand, but I have a nine month tax season or an eight month tax season. Mine is just April or May through December. So I digress. Going back to the story. So I went out to this firm to do my mental health presentation, which we set the stage on. Yes, there's an issue and there's burnout and we got to be careful because burnout's a form of mental illness and it can even go further. And I tell this anecdote, what's the word? Anecdote. An anecdote. Why can't I say it? Anecdote. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anecdote. I have medication. That <laughs> so anecdote. <laughs> the story of me personally, you know, going through, um, some work related, but also some health related, just going through, you know, a major event in my life, uh, which, you know, the story, a stroke. And after the stroke, I, I went through some, you know, deep PTSD and depression and panic attacks and, and it was bad. So I tell the story of equating that to the uncontrolled stress that we can go through in our profession, which there's tons of stress with deadlines and clients that we don't want to talk to. And we see that phone ring and it's, ABC client, I don't want to talk to them, or just trying to keep up with the next person from the hours and billing. So there's all these things. But so I went out to this firm, I'm telling the whole story, I tell these solutions that we have. And inevitably, and I said that word, right? All right, inevitably, um, in, in these presentations, somebody comes up to me afterwards, and shares their story of mm. depression, or you know, something other from a mental illness standpoint. And one of the biggest things I think to help, I think is extremely important as a leader. Kenji, you just let me go. I'm going to go on rants. I, <laughs> I, this is exactly why you're here, my man. Right. So as a leader, I think one of the biggest things you can do is be vulnerable. You know, share your personal, whatever it is, struggles or triumphs or, or whatever it is. And so after this presentation, the managing partner gets up this is a pretty big firm. Angie Partner gets up and shares his personal story of a family member dealing with depression and how they've struggled and what they're doing. And, and he's just, you know, bawling his eyes out, which I love. I mean, I don't love that he's going through that, but I love that he will share this story and show that he is a human and that we all have issues. And now that entire firm that sat in there realizes that they can go to him with, you know, I'm struggling with this mentally, uh, and, and they know that he can relate and, and he's vulnerable. So I, I just think that is so important. I, I think so too. I, I, I love that you share that. I mean, that has been, um, I'll, I'll even share and thanks for going there and talking about you personally. I mean, about why you've been passionate about it. Cause you've experienced this. You've, you've, you've gone through the challenges of mental illness. And I think that you're right. Once, um, whether whoever it might be, you maybe it's just you're listening to a podcast of a couple of knuckleheads like us, or maybe you you have a good friend or someone you work with who is courageous enough to share and be vulnerable, but they've gone through it. Mm -hmm. It opens things up for you. I mean, I, I can so I've changed quite a bit. I when I was in my um, when I left Arthur Anderson, I went to be a controller of a tech company, and uh, when I was there. I was shifting, changing on healthcare plans. I had to get on a new healthcare plan. So I had to go get a new primary care physician, just blah, blah, blah. Got a routine physical, literally in a routine physical at the age of 27, found out I had cancer, right? And so I obviously, one of those, the big C word, right? Shocking, mm -hmm. all those things. Um, thankfully, I'm here today. And I I'm see a, that I'm 23 years later. Yep. All the things, but- I handled it in a way that I would never do today. Now that I've had other friends and I've seen the effects of it, I was, I put that on my back. I dealt with it. People would say, Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. No big deal. I, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to turn it. I was still it. in the yep. mindset of like, I'm going to push my way through and I'm not, I'm the one that helps other people. I don't burden other people with my stuff. Like I, I got this. I'm mentally tough. I'm the optimistic. I mean, you know me really well. Yep. I'm the fun loving optimistic guy and I didn't share it. And I had a friend not, you know, 
once I was kind of in the clear with my prognosis, we went to lunch and he said to me, I never forget. He's like, you, you good now? How are you doing health wise? He goes, you look good. I'm like, I'm doing great. He goes, good because I'm pretty pissed off at you. Uh-huh. I said, wait, 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 what are you talking about? He goes, that was a tough thing you went through. And I know it was tough. And he's like, you, you just tried to, you know, you just tried to be all brave and great for you. I get that. He goes, but you didn't, you robbed me of an opportunity to be your friend. Like what, what are friends for? Friends are here to support each other and to help each other. And, and I always remember that thinking I did, like, I didn't, I, I didn't, I wanted to be so kind of tough and I'm going to just hide all this and stuff it down. And I've really changed. I mean, we've certainly had a lot of challenges. I've had one of my, one of my kiddos um, who has had a lot of challenges with, with mental health and we've been much more open about it. Right. And those conversations that you just mentioned, Randy, um, of where you share that and other people come out oh, yeah. and just, you realize that you can talk to them and connect with them and other people are going through those same issues and you can lean on You're their not experience. The only one. You can help yep. It's just, it, it is, is so much more versus when I think back about when I went through my health issue, I was back there kind of hunkered down, just me and my wife kind of fearful, hunkered down and like no support because I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. And it made it worse. Yep. And you know why? Now I'm psychoanalyzing because of the profession you came through. You can't show any weakness in that. You can't show that you're vulnerable. You have to power through it. I mean, I might be wrong. You have to. No, but you know, Randy, but- I, as I look back at that time in my life when I was doing that, you know what it said on my business card? Controller. My title was controller. I'm trying to control <laughs> exactly. everything. Yep. And I'm like, I'm Kenji is in control of everything. And I realized I'm not in control of everything. And yep. I was still trying to pretend like I was. And boy, it just made it worse and worse. And now it's like you get out there. So I think I do think sharing sharing your story like that is um incredibly powerful and helpful. Cause I think it brings it starts bringing about people who say, Hey, how do we make a change to this? How do we help support people better? Right. Which I think is super interesting. Um, I want to talk about some things that maybe either you've seen or recommend about beyond the conversation people doing, but like also I've already, I'm already shifting into beer number two. <laughs> um, I'll be there with you. All I'm, right. I'm going to finish up, dude. I really, really love here this West coast. Yeah. I've already poured mine. I was letting it we're going to get this next one up here. Um, I do like this West Coast now. It, it is it is surpri- so this is from a brewery in Chicago. I've always complained a little bit that Chicago doesn't do a great job on West Coast style IPAs. I think this is one of the better Chicago this West is a Coast really IPAs. Good one. Yeah. Hats off cheers to them whoever you had to do it. It's excellent. It's a great um you know, a lot of good citra in there and oh that's a that's solid. Okay. Yeah, and they have an experimental hop in here too, which is uh, the HBC 630. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't even have an official name yet because it's experimental, but I like it. I do too. I do too. Um, all right. Let's talk about what's next here. I think we're, I've already poured mine. Ah, I'm pouring. Um, I'll hold up what we're going to going to next. All right. This so the next the one is a uh, pug. Fat pug. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the oatmeal. Mine, mine's not a good, a clear picture there. I don't know. I um, um, so so this was supposed to be for Matthew, but he blew us off. He did. Um, no pressure though, because we don't need to put pressure on people in public accounting. It's a very <laughs> <laughs> we will learn that. All right, that's right. Yeah. So, um, but this is a uh, this is a, a a brewery in Chicago, Maplewood, Maplewood, that has expanded very nicely. They they get distributed around the not the all country but they get I, I find them in surprising places i travel a lot and i'm like wow you guys got maplewood here so this is a brewery by a, a couple of guys that really good people um they're about a half mile from the beer temple which is my bar and or the bar not my bar a bar i'm a partner in in chicago it's more chris's and steven's and max's and ryan's and everybody else's bar i'm just uh, uh get to be involved with it but this is, I think they've won a few awards with this at the Great American Beer Fest. I'm almost certain they have. And it's a oatmeal milk stout, really solid, not overly strong. I know Matthew's a big... He, uh, likes, he likes it a little bit. Yeah, he likes to yeah. get crazy. With everything. Yeah, he likes those uh, pastry stouts. Um, he does. I'm not a huge fan of that, but uh, here's what, here's what I nice, like about this. Here, this yep. will be my beer, my beer nerd side. Is I love 
on the back of the can for anybody there. It's got, so when you're a very amateur beer brewer like me, you can actually see the grain bill, what they put in it, everything else they've got in it. They've even got the hops, um, what they've got. So you just have a very clear idea about exact. So you could, if, if you're kind of a beer nerd, you could try your best to go and kind of replicate. And they're like, oh, sure. Here's, here's what we got in there. So it's mm-hmm. very, uh, whenever I see that from a brewery, I'm all, I have a ton of respect because they're just showing. I agree. I agree. What's in and this is nice. Yeah. So it's got the Ooh, warrior so and good. northern brewer hops. It tells you even the vitals, the IBUs, mm-hmm. which is the international bittering units. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily tell you if it's going to be bitter or not because the sugars that are in there will make the difference from a mouthfeel standpoint. But they'll tell you at least how how many hops they don't, they are don't in there. They don't give you the percentages on the grain bill or how much lactose no. is in there. But you know, so it's hard to tell how much that IBUs are in a cup. But you know, yeah, they're given the SRM, though, even the good, even the good coloring and things on there. So yep. yeah, a lot of good. Yep. This is catering to a bunch of beer nerds like like you and I, Randy. Yeah, no, it's a good beer for sure. And it's one I don't do, go to enough because every time I have it, I'm like, that's a really good. And I, I you know what? There's a one stout that I that is my favorite, which is uh, Expedition Stout from Bell's Brewery. Awesome yeah, stout. Yeah. It's a 10 percenter. Um, but man, it and it's one of the few beers that you can actually age and it gets better. Oh, um, wow. Most beers you do not want to age, yeah, uh, especially yeah. IPAs. Uh, but this stout, if you hold it a year, oh, it's just amazing. It I don't know if I'd go longer, but it's amazing. That being said, I'm not going to drink a 10 percenter all the time. <laughs> so this one at 5.9 is just an awesome, awesome. It really beer. is. I, I, I like that. That way it's much easier. Um I mean, Matthew would, he'd want like a lot more stuff poured in here in the high, and double the ABV, but like. He'll pour a little vodka into this to get it stronger. <laughs> this is great though. This is excellent. So cheers. So you and I, one. yeah, cheers. That's right. You and I and he and the few other people, we got to hang out at the beer temple over the summer and Matthew tried every heavy stout that was on the draft board i just think that day and he was in good shape even afterwards so that he was, was pretty good to he's him. become a professional with this I, so i'll say and we'll then we'll jump back into some other <laughs> back where we were um When we were there at the unique CPA event, my youngest brother is in Chicago, him, him and his wife. I'm like, I told him about, about the event and he's, he's not, an, he's not an accountant. So he's like, that does not sound very enjoyable. <laughs> Where are you going to be though? And I said, the beer temple. And he's like, what the beer temple? He was so excited. And then he came over, he had a ball there and he actually said, your your friends in the accounting industry are actually pretty fun. I'm like, I I know that. I feel yeah. like if pe- I feel like if people understood actually how much fun accountants could be when we're not under all this crazy pressure, we'd right. have a lot more people going through this. So anyway, he would it, the draw to him was he only got there because it was the beer temple. But once he was there, he was like, this guy Scott Scarano is pretty interesting. This guy over here, you know, and yeah. Randy is awesome. And so it was a it was a really really fun event. I'm really really happy that you're you're going to be doing something like that in the future again because that that was an awesome event. Yeah, and so what you just said, I think, is a great anecdote for you got it. You got it for for our profession in general because people have this perception that we're not a fun group. We're these nerds with the pocket protectors and we're just at our desk 24 seven with the 10 key calculator going. And, and it's not that we have, a, that. you are it's a good really example. If you have fun in this profession, it's really, really sure. not that I, I would say if you're ever, you know, 
again, I think Scott Scarano and I talked about this with Nicole McKenzie on his podcast. I'm like, just if you're thinking about going to a conference, we're at a lot of them. Find any one of us, right? We're open, like, sure, come along and hang out and, yep. you know, we're happy to introduce you to friends and go have fun. You'll you'll be surprised by how fun-loving accountants are. But beyond, like, one of the things I do, honestly, when I think about, uh, this is more me personally than as a firm, but, like, when I think about burnout and just things used to burn me out, like, I'm a big extrovert. I'm a huge people person. I just love being with my friends and such. And I have made so many wonderful friends like you and others in the industry. Like I like going to conferences. Like I, you know, some of the sessions don't always appeal to me, but just the time with other firm owners and people who care about the space and just great friends. To me, it is, it revitalizes me. I struggled. I struggled greatly during COVID. It was a really tough time for me, like it was for probably many people, especially yep. if you're an extrovert and you like to get out and about. Yep. Um, certainly had some things like on the family front. I had, I had a kiddo who was struggling during that too. And that makes it yep. hard as a parent. Yep. Definitely. I really had a tough time. I, I That's when I went and grabbed my my now therapist counselor who I see on a regular basis, who like has been so helpful. I'm, I'm actually glad that happened. And now that I have him as part of, my tool set in my life, but like it, I needed to be around people. So I, I use that as one of the ways to where um, I get, I can just see and my family can see that when I come back from these trips, whether it's zero con I'm with you or up in Chicago, whatever it mm-hmm. might be, you know, I come back refreshed. It, it's good for me. Um, yeah. But beyond that, what are you seeing, Randy? You that people are, are people starting to people or firms starting to say, "Hey, we're going to really think about mental health and wellness." What are they? What are they doing? What are they considering? What are they changing? Yep. Um, so there's there's a this so, so cool when I talk about this presentation it evolves every time. So when I talk about mental health, every time I'm in front of a firm or an organization, a conference, whatever, um, it, it changes every time. But I learn from everybody, which is. Yeah. Just what you're saying, just part of being at a conference, you're learning from the people you're there with. Same thing for me. And so there's there's a few things that that I'll like simple things that I, I see. And some of them aren't that simple, but I have one person who she is a big proponent of the free to focus. Um, um there's a there's a, a program and then there's actually like a journal where you just set your schedule up to maximize your output based on time, minimize your distractions because there's certain hours of the day that you're only going to do this thing. You know, block out the morning that just get work done. And no, everybody knows you can't get an email. You can't get a call. You're not going to answer text. You're not going to look at your phone. And then there's, and then, and I can, this is an hour presentation where she can do this and talk about it. But also there is, you can determine based on just doing some trail and error with yourself, what times a day you have the most energy block off that for your high value, mm. high concentration projects. And there's times of the day where you don't have as much energy, but you can still be productive on something else. Yeah. Block it off for your meetings and your callbacks and your emails or whatever. And, and so she's implemented this system. I'm making it sound really much simpler than this. She's implemented this in her firm. She's managing partner of this firm and they've, gone and I get my numbers a little bit wrong, but before this, they were probably working 60 hours a week during tax season, you know, and based on me being an old timer, that's like nothing. That's a lot though. But in my mind, that was 60 this year in tax season. And they started measuring it last year, this year in tax season, they have a policy. Nobody can work more than 45 hours. And what they found is they are more productive, more profitable, working, working, working less hours by having this focus time and just having a really significant schedule that and and to do list. I don't have a hundred thing to do list. I have three main goals that I am going to meet this week, and then I accomplish those. Maybe I'll add another, but I'm not going to worry about number ninety nine on my to do list. I am fully focused on these top three. And this is a daily, a weekly, a monthly thing. And so so that's one thing that people that's are awesome. doing. Another one that is that is we are all guilty of was being on 24-7 <laughs> with our phones, Terrible. with text, with team messages, with Slack messages, with emails, with phone calls. We can be on nonstop. And we can't. It's going to drain you. 
You need this refreshing time. You need this rejuvenation time. And so just learning how to, and I won't go into it now because it takes too long, but if anybody is interested, you can reach out to me. I'm no expert, but I know the experts, uh, which is a big part of me. I know the experts. I may not be it. Um, but just how to shut down at the end of the day. Yeah, a ritual yeah. you can go through, a bookmark in your work, a have a plan that I'm going to do this instead of work at the end of the day, and even a ritual that I, at the end of the day I do something specific. And so my mind, you train your mind that now I'm shut down. That's it. The day's over. But I don't have to think about anything because I've already told my morning self with notes what I'm going to do when I come back in the morning. So I already know I don't have to think about. It. So little things like that you could do. You know, John Garrett, I'm a huge fan of and his, you know, corporate culture and being able to allow your outside of passions come into your inside of work uh, uh, passions is huge. And I can go on and on, I love that. but there's so many things you can do. I, I love the one, and I want to we'll have to revisit this one because you're right; it's, it's probably bigger to get into. But in, in all the all the really good experience you shared there from other people, it's funny the one that stuck in my brain was you talked about putting a bookmark in your oh, yeah. book. Yeah, and and I just it just kind of hit me of like that is so hard for me to do. It's so hard for team members to do. I watch my wife, who's an incredible worker. She same thing, it, putting a, being able to say like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to, yes, you're stopping work. I'm going to pick right. it back up at, at a better appropriate time. So being able to put a bookmark in your work, that's a oh, cool, yeah. this is a cool image for me of like, I can, oh, yeah. I can do that and do that at another time where I love to read. I read a lot and I put bookmarks in books all the time where I'm like, Hey, it's kind of not hitting me anymore. I'm too tired or like, right. I'm not put a bookmark in it and come back to it. Right. That's the that's same a cool, concept. That's a really cool concept. I love that concept. Because um, if you don't, you're going to be, I'll guarantee you at 10 o'clock at night, you're going to think, what am I doing tomorrow morning? What, where was I? What, what where was, was I? where was I? And if you bookmark it, you give yourself a note. Hey, tomorrow, just remember this, is where you're starting. You can clear your mind. Now Absolutely. you're not thinking about that in the evening because you know, you've already told yourself what you're going to do tomorrow morning. I love that. Do I do it? Probably not to the level I was going to say, I love, we'll have to talk about how you do it. I love the idea of it. To me, yes. it's just a, to, to, what, what that connotates is a discipline of the mind, right? Where yeah. you yep. can literally say, hey, I'm going to put it here and I'm going to go and I'm going to compartmentalize, I'm going to move it. And it's not sitting there weighing on you or you're thinking about it, which is, which is something that I think all of us do. I know I do. Um, so let I'm me do one more thing on few, that. Sorry, yeah. Kenji. Let me do one more yeah. thing on that. So, yeah, so we had this virtual conference last year. Um, we do a conference every year. And you're actually helping us out with this in-person one we're going to do this year. But our, our keynote speaker was Rob Zabersky. And he does this presentation on train your brain for success. And it's what you were just saying. You can train your brain that. And so that's out on YouTube, on our Trimerit YouTube channel. If anybody, I think it actually I might be wrong. It might be on our website right now. But that's just another. We got great feedback on that where he talked about training your brain you, for success. Yeah. Yep. All right. Back to you. We'll put, we'll put some links out there. Yeah. All these all these show notes will be linked. And so you can go check out what all the things Rainy's talking about. I'm going to shout out a few people. Because I think about things I've watched other firms do that are interesting to me. And these are ones of varying sizes. So I'll start with um, uh, my friend, uh, Marie Green, uh, Connected Accounting. She's just, well, she's smaller now, but she'll be, she'll be like big four, like in a year. I mean, <laughs> Marie is amazing. She's growing like crazy. Um, she put something out recently about using some employee recognition software. Uh, it's called, it's called Hey Taco. Wow. Hey Taco. Okay. How about that for a name, right? Cool name. But she's got it implemented and you implement it in the Slack and other team members get to sh shout out and give virtual tacos to team members. And you kind of <laughs> give them, you know, support them and all these things and you can use them for all. It's really cool. I, I was, and, so Marie, thank you for sharing that. Um, awesome. I think that was last week. You put that out there as something that your team was using. I, I've, I would looked at that. Um, I think of another firm who I, 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 I think highly of uh, our friends over at growth lab, uh, Dan and Steven and their team. Um, I've heard that you guys may be pulling together your own kind of conference or all hands. I love that. And that's something we've been doing for a while. And I just love that. Like, 
bringing people together, something about that, right? Um, even for our, say, oh, our yeah. experience a bit with introverts, bringing people together, just what you did in Chicago at the Beer Temple, just has some sense of, it just connects you and bonds you, gives you greater purpose. And I think that that is a great way you know, to really help combat some of the challenges of feeling isolated and alone and what am I doing? And and that's great. Um, another another great firm here in Atlanta that we look up to, we've known a ton of it, the folks over at Apriel, right? Yeah. Um, they have, I haven't talked to any of them about this, but I've admired this from afar. Um, or maybe someone's shared this with me, but Aprio has counselors. I think, I don't know if they still do this, but where yeah. they literally put out via email, like, hey, our counselors, uh, we have free counseling. Do you feel like you need to talk to anybody privately mm-hmm. and confidentially? Here's the Calendly link or whatever you might have to where this month you can sign up for it completely for free. Yep. And just go talk to somebody. And they're a bigger firm, right? So those are some examples of small and medium and big size firms to where I think all of them are out trying to find some ways, just like you mentioned, Randy, of like, well, how do we help people through this, right? And so it's happening. I think if you get out there in the community, in the environment, you talk to people, you ask questions, you, you know, you'll find some things that might help you in your firm. Um, but it starts with probably having the conversation and saying, let's talk about it. Let's be vulnerable. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think maybe if you're not entirely comfortable with that yet, maybe having a speaker or someone come in to kind of help you kind of facilitate that conversation might open some things up. And so I, I love what you're doing. Um, we've leaned on you for a lot of your tech specialty and things there, but I also really appreciate the fact that you're someone who kind of thinks deeper about let's also let people understand this can be a great profession. We can do some wonderful things here and it's an important profession, but there's some changes that need to happen, but let's make it fun again. It really is fun. And I think you and I today, while we're sitting here doing exactly this or having a good time and talking about positive change we can have in the profession. So I I love that, man. I love that you're here doing it and I appreciate you being here for this. So thank you. um, And two things I need to thank you for sharing your story. I didn't know this cancer story before and, yeah. and, and sharing that was awesome to hear. I didn't like the way you went through it, but that's your own thing. That's right. I know it. Um, I've learned a lot um, from that. Right. Um, but, but I appreciate you sharing and that's vulnerability right there. And then, uh, um, what these other firms are doing, I've been good friends with, I feel, I feel good friends with Richard Copeman, who's managing partner of Aprio for a handful of years now. And I've always been impressed with what they're doing there. Very progressive. Yeah. Yep. For sure. So appreciate that info. Well, let's finish up as we always do with rating some beers. And then, so I don't know if yours is on there, but we're going to go first to what we're drinking right now. The Fat Pug, and again, you know Untapped, it's a one to zero to five rating scale of how you feel about this beer, Randy. Yep. Um, so here's, what, yeah, give me a little Here's bit my of, deal. Okay. So I'm, I'm, so here, I, so I used to do a ton of Untapped. I mean, I, in a short time, <laughs> I had thousands of things on Untapped. Um <laughs> And 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 I honestly started feeling guilty about rating beers because that affects do. this brewery. You know what I mean? I know. So my more thing is would I drink it again or not drink it again? And I drink a fat pug in a second. So anything I'm gonna drink again is a five. Five that, boom. That's the way it Easy. Is. Five. Yep. I'm with you. A five there in a heartbeat. I love that. I love I love that. Um we use it. So Matthew and I kind of use untapped here as it's basically a chronology, a history of yes. all the things we've consumed, which again, I always worry about, could we ever be like in a court of law, someone say, is this is this true, Mr. Kuramoto? This is all the, like, I don't know if I want that as public record, but then again, <laughs> it's fun and fun to look back at. It is um, fun. Now, do we know, like, is there, do we know if- You can find it. <gasps> now, somebody that was on our virtual conference actually put there it on. It is. On tap. There it yes. is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no, <laughs> okay. I'm not even going to ask. This gets a five automatically. Yes. <laughs> five. I mean, we don't even have enough. We need more. Yes. People, people get here on untapped. You've got to reach out to Randy, get some of this, get it to where they actually have an actual rating. 
because yeah. this is a five point oh beer. I think yeah, we got about four or five ratings now at this point, so we're getting well, we there. Just got, we just got our <laughs> fifth right there. Um, nice. Hey, my friend, I am always so grateful uh, to have you on. Your The beer you send is next level, but like the time we get to spend together, I just I just love. I really, really appreciate it. So, so and I've got to say, I got to add to that because, you know, I have made so many good friends in this industry, this profession. I don't know. Some people yell at me for calling it industry, industry or profession, whatever it is. <laughs> and, and the last year, I just feel like I've 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 you know, wormed my way into this awesome group of you and Matthew and Scott Scarano and Don Brolin and, and Jason Stats oh, yes. and all these people that are just doing amazing things in the industry. So you, 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 one, I appreciate that you allowed me in. <laughs> and two, I appreciate everything that you're doing because what you're doing is different. And you say it, we're building this firm in weird ways. You're doing things different. And anybody that's doing things different, I want to give kudos to. And I want to be able to share what they're doing with others because this is an awesome profession and anything we can do to make it better. And I know this is your, your philosophy too. Anything we can do to make it better, I'm all for. So thank you so much. Thank you, my man. That's exactly what we're here to do. I appreciate all the people who are listening. If you get a chance, like, subscribe, but also go and check out the Unique CPA where we have a similar mission of like, we are literally trying to make the accounting profession fun. It is fun. It can be, it can be a great place to live, live and work. So check out the Unique CPA live. We'll have links there. And Randy, thanks for being on brother. Cheers, man. Thank Cheers. You.